So, welcome to Weapon Wednesday. This is a project of mine that um, we finally got to uh, starting up. And the idea of it is we, um, we take a concept of um, maybe something from pop culture or an object like we are today and try to come up with an interesting weapon design for it. Um, we had just started one um, last week and did the uh, did new weapons for the Ninja Turtles, and this one is going to be more like the streamlined idea I had because that was about uh, <laughs> six hours of streaming, and by the end of it, I honestly started to have my br brain blank out. It was a fun challenge for myself, but uh, whew, boy, that was <clears throat> fun. You know, I need to stop doing vocal warm-ups of uh, Asian Kung Fu Generation songs because I, I think, oh yeah, screaming, that's going to help me enunciate. So I just shout Haruka Kanata at the top of my lungs. But that is distraction talking and not me talking about um, uh, what we will be uh, trying to make a weapon of. We're going to be making a weapon out of aerosol spray paint, spray paint, spray paint. No, dang it. I wanted to flip that around more, but may as well stop screwing around. So. <clears throat> the, uh, the thing, the reason I wanted to do this, um... I should have a file I can uh, put in real quick, just for reference. I am working on a comic that follows a handful of superheroes, but this is like the, um, this is Tag, and he's like the uh, frontliner, I guess you would say. You know, where, um... Marvel, you probably first think of Spider-Man, and DC, you think of Batman and Superman. That's, that's, that's where Tag, I picture, will be provided he's popular enough. And they're a superhero with, um, like, biologically produced high-pressure spray paint pores in their body. Uh, at least is, like, the uh, concept of them. So... I want to design, like, how one would mimic their powers with a, uh, with a weapon, so to speak. Or maybe not so much a weapon as a tool for this one, I think would probably be a more accurate term. I'm going to actually increase my grid. This is just mainly stylistic. I don't actually need it, but... You know, it's something that looks nice with everything. I like to think. Uh, so, let me change my brush here. The interesting thing is that with aerosol paints and plenty of other things, you probably can guess where I'm going with it, uh, they have a bunch of highly pressurized air that's like put into i, th I think the way they do it in uh, factories is they um they like make a vacuum <clears throat> in it after filling it up with the paint and everything so like they'll fill it to say about why am I sketching it like that? Um, move that over there. They'll fill the can to about this point. And up to here, they'll have this hole that's like kind of held in with like some little device on the inside. Little tab thing. And... Stick a needle in, 
pressurize it all with air. This is also kind of a science class, as you can tell. <laughs> um, you know, that allows it to highly pressurize the paint to spray out very strong. And if you know what you're doing and practice enough evenly against the surface, which is really helpful if you're into um, nice, solid coloring and everything. I used to um, do that a lot for like pretty much all of my actual paintings for their uh, background layers and such, because I liked working on color, but I didn't like smearing paint all over. So I just got a can, sprayed it over a couple of times, and it was nice and flat. Because I also don't have, um, no one really has like good risk control starting out, and I still don't. And I've made tools and stuff, like I would get a piece of cardboard and, uh, just like take a glob of paint, get the cardboard, smear it like a palette knife kind of deal to uh, cover like big canvases and everything. But I still preferred to do spray paint because there's something about using aerosol spray paint that just really feels like an energized art form to me. And, you know, it's not easy to really teach that in schools because it still has like special kind of aerosol is still, a, I think, a chemical by technicality. So you can't breathe that, which is why it's important if you ever do spray paint. To wear a damn mask. You know, that thing that filters all the tiny particles spraying out so it doesn't get in your lungs and screw them up. It's almost like it's been helpful for years. And for some reason, people just kind of forgot that. Go figure. Now, the first idea I had, because I, I uh, like many people, I make fan art. And I had, I made like little AUs for myself growing up and... Tag was based on this design of a uh, my own universe's Spider-Man that was a graffiti artist, but he made like web tags and stuff. And I like the idea that like instead of having like high-end web shooters, uh, he had like grappling hooks attached to strapped on the wrist spray paint things so i have like a grappling hook and everything here for that but uh what i'm more focused on and it was a, the idea was kind of inspired from all those spider-man toys that at this point you're probably looking at this and you're going oh <clears throat> sorry yeah that's a little dry uh you're probably looking at it and going oh yeah i had one of those toys my parents hated it because I just sprayed silly string all over the house, which I did a lot and I loved them. I still do. I never don't want this ever. If anyone ever wants to get me something, don't ever think that I don't want one of these. But this was the uh, basic first idea. But the thing is, um, realistically, you need something that can have a constant stream and that's where tag superpowers come in but um you know most humans can't have that and i'm gonna this is gonna take like suspension of belief for this design one way or the other i think because i'm not an engineer i don't know how i would accomplish making this something that you could feasibly use for even an hour with the amount of like Say you need this much paint, but you need like this much pressurization and you need it to constantly spray out. So, because like one of the things is as a superpower, I can do whatever I want with it. And I could have like such a high amount of pressure that it could be like one of those, um, 
water cutter jets that they have that they have for like um cutting metal and everything metal sheets precisely <clears throat> but to some extent i want to like at least come up with an idea of what we could put down here and we're also we're also going to try because i said we're going to just do one weapon today but i'm trying to make a gear and if I just made like a nice wrist mounted thing, that that'd be all well and good. But I also want to make something so that because his other his other use of his powers is he ha I designed him to have like special holes in his shoes. They're like um they're like Air Force Skechers with the bubble in them and stuff, but they directly go to his pores. And on the soles of them, and on the backs, have little jets. And I want to just design those shoes as well. Because he's a parkourist, he, he can't get enough to fly. But like with it, he can propel his body parts all over the place to, um, you know, do superhuman things. Uh, David, <laughs> is superhero and do is is good. Does it good? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your American education system at work. Maybe if I'm feeling fancy, I might, uh, I might design other ideas. Cause like this is like, I'd still think you'd need like some kind of backpack or something. So you can have like some kind of steady flow coming from it. Um, But we'll see. We'll see as this goes. Let's focus on designing tags gear as a uh, spray paint weapons. The oh my gosh! <laughs> I <laughs> I actually found out I can trick my stylus pen. I have my thumb over it and it thinks I'm drawing. That's I was, I was like just a few inches off the board. <laughs> Okay, enough enough goofing around. Let's um let's actually make something nice now. Uh, let's see. That's basic one. Okay, I want the uh, sharp pad. So Let's start off with the wrist mounts, because that's going to be the interesting thing. Like, the idea of this is that, um, you know, I get, I get you guys interested in the thought process that goes into gear and weapons with, like, mechanisms and such, or really special blade shapes or something like that, whatever I come up with. And, uh... You know, I just try to have fun designing it my way, as I have developed it. We're going to, real quick... There we go. Just 
Yeah. yeah. Okay, I see we still don't have anyone in chat yet. Um, <clears throat> these streams are, uh, they're going to be every, like, first two Wednesdays of the month. So just a heads up on that. Got to add these. No, that's not the right image. First thing, we probably do want this. I mean, those are the basic reference sketches, but I should probably still be using a sketching pencil for the time being until I got telling the ins and outs figured out. I want this. What we need to do is be able to. thinking about it and if we wanted the wrist mounts we need it to be able to hold spray paint cans and I think the best way to do it is actually kind of the opposite of this shape and I'll draw I'll draw out what I mean so let's say we got kind of a mount like little plastic clips It's okay to look lazy when you're sketching. Because we, if this was ever made into like a real thing, I'd I'd want it to have like has an ease that um you can just put stuff in, and that's what I was thinking with this. And then I thought, well. If we go with this design, these would probably be other air canisters, but it'd still have to funnel out through this. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized I don't really like that so much. But say that, um, let's say that like we make this just slightly longer actually because the more i think about it like i was thinking maybe we have two spray cans here but that's a lot of weight that's a lot of weight and i don't think that would be comfortable or practical to do so we're gonna add one more clip And with that, we're actually going to kind of get rid of this first upper one instead. This will be where the spray can comes in. And I figure no nozzle, but it'll still have that little pit hole thing. I don't know what you would call it. Um, it would just clip in there. Which, considering the size of spray can, can I have kind of big arms, kind of long arms. Spray can is about think close to the quarter of the size of my forearm just kind of eyeballing it uh, so this could be a little bit difficult too so instead of being like wrist mounted uh, 
from the inside like I was thinking. I think it would have to be on the outside. So we're also going to have to think of something to go over the hand to spray it. Because, like, if we had it the other way, we could do the Spider-Man pressure gauge thing. But I don't think there's enough weight if we want to get all the other bits and pieces on here. And what I'm thinking is that we have at least two air canisters. I can, I can imagine with, like, someone with proper technology access. Like, I'm a fan of uh, Hacksmith Industries, for example. I imagine the sun they could make. Um... They could get, like, two air canisters that could steadily make a stream, latch them into whatever device we have up front here that would take the paint. It's already kind of pressurized, but injected, because this will still only spray at about... The amount that it's meant to spray. It's not going to be a highly pressurized thing that, say, if you were a superhero, you need to um, use air to <laughs> maybe like cut through a wooden building or something to save someone that was like trapped in debris in an earthquake. It's fiction. Don't don't question it. Excuse me. Gosh dang it. We'll call that the hand. Um, let's make kind of a that be comfortable enough because I'm also still imagining it's got to be able to like like the idea is the pressure will release when you pull upwards on this handle I'm thinking will that be comfortable underneath the uh, the arm and I think that should be fine We got the canister tubes connecting in. So now we get into this next bit. Because for this, all we need is just some like nice tight straps to keep it centered on your arm when it sprays. This might be something that already exists, but I, I, I'm making it anyways. Because you can't stop me. Um, First thing I'm thinking, the nozzle will be right about there. I'm thinking we make it like It's like a little tri-nozzle thing. So it can rotate from like flat spray, straighten out, some kind of super thin pinhole. With this shape, I think the way to do this would be probably have like a pressure gauge up here. And of course, it'd be really hard to show, but like imagine there's a bunch of pistons and stuff going on on the inside there. And I think that's a pretty good design for the mount. 
So let's do a real draw up of it now. Okay. And with that, I think, because we've been going for a while, maybe in our time I'll draw the shoes, um, but I think that's a good design for our extra pressurization spray paint gauntlet machine. It definitely looks cool. I bet you can make this in your garage. I wouldn't recommend it if you don't have any like engineering experience because I am not an engineer. I am an artist and I don't I the only engineering experience I have is from watching Hacksmith videos. So yeah, I'm no expert. Bugging me how. But uh yeah. With that, I'd say we can conclude this Weapon Wednesday. Uh, thank you for... Dang it. We could, we'll call it that. Thank you for watching this Weapon Wednesday uh, design. Um, still getting used to this program. If I was on my drawing tablet, I could probably do better than I've been doing for these, but uh, I'm also challenging myself to get used to uh, working off of my laptop instead of my tablet. Uh, so, you know, stuff happens. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, hope you enjoyed watching your thought process of how it works and everything. Um... And, uh, yeah. Enjoy the other videos on my channel if you get the chance. Uh, Trouble Crown is, uh, you know, still growing. And we're doing, I'm doing everything I can to uh, see this, you know, become more than just something someone sees of the hobby. I really want to make a career out of, you know, creating content, not just of art, but of comics and animation stuff and uh, some gaming here and there we're working on. Uh, but uh, that concludes the uh, Today's Weapon Wednesday stream.